Hi guys, it's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am going to take you on a brew tour. This is a Sunday, usually when I try to get here bright and early when they open at 10. We only can restock our booths while it is open. If I had one downside of the booth, that would be it. I, Cause I, yeah, you know, I like to move things an inch over and change things out and cycle things back through. So I try to do it on a Sunday morning. We haven't been here in two weeks. Um, so, cause we went away for the, the the weekend before. So we will see how the booth looks. And so I'm, it's right before the 4th of July weekend. I'm not sure when this is going to air that I'm going to share it with you all. So let's see what the booth looks like. What, let's see what we're going to exchange out. Yep, that's what the back of my vehicle looks like of things that I want to maybe potentially, you know, you bring everything you can. Sometimes you take some stuff back home. Sometimes you put it in your booth and you take other things home. So let's see what the booths look like. So I thought I would just take you on a little tour of, I am then, this is as you saw from the outside of the building, it is a huge building. One side is mostly all antiques and I'm in what they consider the craft side. So I thought I would share with you some of the crafters. Yet, yet again, I can't say that there's a ton, like the whole side is not full of crafters, but we all kind of over time have a mix of crafts and antiques and thrift store finds that we're reselling here. So I thought I would just take you on a tour. Who doesn't like to look at shelves and go down a memory lane of items or I have that item or I saw somebody make over the item. And this booth interests me because I'm like, I think this person, I don't know who it is, but I think they watched Julie's channel because I saw, I spied some things. I can't say necessarily they watched my channel but now for us this is one of our favorite booths yep this is the guy that turns all that wooden the little feet the legs that we use for risers he's got some spindles yep i definitely love to vi visit his booth and see what he has turned and what we can potentially buy for our thrift finds So I'm just going to be sharing random booths with you, ones that catch my eye. This is a farmhouse booth. These are all, I believe, to be new purchase goods that they're reselling. It's a little mix of everything in the area that I'm in.
I know one of the biggest questions we always get as a YouTuber that resells and shares our vision and our basically our business with you all that the price is. So this is where when I'm walking around our area in here, I'm looking at prices. I'm looking at items that are similar. You all ask where we come with our prices when you are in a area like this, you want to be competitive. You don't want to be way too much lower. You don't want to be a whole bunch higher. So this is a great opportunity, even if you're just reselling locally on Marketplace or on your own Facebook page or however y'all are selling it, you know, go to your local little craft area like this, the local little antique mall, if they have something like this, if you have a flea market, vending fair, whatever you have, and check out your area prices. Do a little bit of research. For Because every area is a little bit different of what you can resell an item for. And not only is it fun to go and check out others' prices in your area, it's also fun to see how people stage their booths. If you're struggling with your booth or how to stage items when you're picturing them, when you're reselling them on the interweb, you definitely want to you know, check out what how other people style them up, how they make them look appealing to others.
also want to share with you, not only is it crafts like I do, but look at this. People can crochet, they can knit, they can sew. So you'd be surprised what some of your area craft vendors antique malls might have in it. If you are somebody that has a craft like this and you enjoy doing this, there's a market out there for reselling it. So I'm hoping that me sharing some of these booths with you if you were like, hey, I do that. I didn't know you could get a booth and resell like that. I hope this helps y'all. And as I was filming for you this day, I just happened to be blessed by some of my viewers. They were in town to go to a nephew's graduation. So I hope you were watching this because this is the booth I was at when you spied and I heard the ginger chick name get shout out. I am so, so very much appreciate you taking time not only to come to enjoy your nephew's graduation, but coming to the antique mall to check out my my booth and I was so blessed to get to meet you ladies. I hope that you hear this and I hope you're watching. And then the other thing with walking around the mall and checking out other people's booths and prices, sometimes you find your own items. That little cutting board, that little Aldi's cutting board was something I had rebought to sell and it was left in somebody's booth. Sometimes I say things go up missing but it's a big area so sometimes you got to look around yourself. You all that watch me regularly, you know I'm going to have to touch and feel these rolling pins and check them out. Okay, now I've got some Crocs to look at. Yes, I spy this this booth quite often and just ooh and all over these beautiful Crocs. Oh, 
Well, if you have not heard this from me before, both of my college age kids are working at the antique mall this year, th this summer. And it's kind of nice because I think they were even surprised how much Pyrex does sell. So if you're wondering all these booths that have the Pyrex, yes, oh my gosh, they do sell. And it is kind of nice because they can share with me what is selling. So when you guys are all telling, asking me what is trendy, I, the only thing I can share with you, it is what that one person is looking for. So just when you're doing a booth or making things over to resell, just do what you love. If you have a passion for it, the chances are that somebody else has a passion for it too. I know you all thought I was going to tell you some hidden secret of my kids working there knowing what to buy to resell or what to make to resell. Nope, really. Just do what you love. So I really only got to about quarter of the booths. This place is huge. You could spend hours from open to close here. It is, there's just something for everybody in this mall. So if I lose Chris in the in the mall while I'm restocking and moving things over a quarter of an inch, this is the booth that I can always find him. Yeah, look at all these tools, guys. If you're into tools, old tools, antique tools, just unique tools, yeah, he loves this booth. Hey, it's time to share our booze with you and we like we said we have not been here in two weeks so let's see what it looks like i actually have to say this our this is our second booth and it doesn't look too terribly bad it has people view things or they take things off to look at the prices or choose what they want sometimes things are a little array why you um, have left a booth unseen or unstraightened up. So, yep, this is what it looks like. You all probably recognize some of my thrift haul finds, my thrift store makeovers, the furniture pieces, and yep, I have been adding some, a few little new purchase goods here and there that I can afford to have fillers in. And so now here is our sec, our first booth, and this one is, oh, for some reason, the white, you all are like, oh, white's going out. White is a traditional classic, I tell you, because out of having two booths yeah this is the one like oh my gosh look at that empty space not good for a booth but yeah the white just attracts people in y'all i i will not i will always have my base color of white and then add from there but yep this is what it looks like two weeks of not being in there to straighten things up and bring new stock in. Not terribly bad. I think in the, within the two weeks we sold 76 items. I kid you not. They do a daily tally so you know what to bring stuff back in. See how people just leave the stuff laying around. It just happens. But yep. So I try to go in if not once a week uh, in the middle of the week just to straighten out if there's any big items that have sold so yeah 76 items i don't know what do you all sell in your time space between restocking so i am not ever going to complain about that i'm happy when we sell at least one item a day oh 
Oh, I always think it's no good to bring any of my totes that are full in until I have assessed the booth, start moving things around, start grouping them back together the way that I visually like them to be. As you see, people, they just do. They just move things around. They do it in the grocery store. So I just like to group my things together and like to make little vignettes, little staging areas of things that I think that look similar. I absolutely love these little hen nesting boxes that Chris made me to display little areas like this. And our furniture pieces, you just never know. I can't give them away. <laughs> um, I have to have them at a certain price. It's not easy to find furniture. It takes time to redo furniture. So you probably see a lot of the furniture pieces at the moment sitting. They're not selling as quick this summer as the previous summer, but that's okay. I have. To, they are great staging pieces. People know that they're there. I'm not going to reduce my furniture my furniture prices. And then I'm always constantly moving things around, moving the furniture pieces. I know this dresser has been in there for and not terribly long, maybe a few weeks yet. So I'm going to try to restage it again. Yeah, it's all about staging, guys. If you can make something appealing, make little vignettes, a lot of times people might have that piece at home or they might buy the whole grouping. So I am, yeah, that little OCD perfectionist in me after I get everything tweaked. Oh, poor Chris. Yep, at least he has that tool section to go to why I'm constantly moving things around, deciding what goes together. And then now I can add in my tote, start filling up my shelves again. I take things out out that have been sitting a while or I have new pieces that for people local peeps that are watching my videos that come to this booth regularly I like to restock I like to get it see I like to I I want to fill it that it's full but I don't want to fill it that it's so full that like oh if I touch that piece everything's going to fall down so yep I just keep yeah those shelves have been there for a while these pieces and parts have been there for a while I might take some of the items that have been there put a new tag on them reduce the price a little bit that little corner table um and this booth had been there. We started off at 85 and then marked it to 55 and then finally gave it away at 40 and it actually sold that day. So I hope that I helped at least one person out knowing how I do things and knowing what's going through my head. I don't know if you all want to know what's going through my head all the time because it never stops thinking. But this is the final tour. This is how I tweaked all the booths. This is what it is staged for the next week.
I hope I have left you all with some inspiration, some ideas to take away. If you take away one thing from this video, then it was well worth doing. So I thank you all for watching and thanks for being part of our YouTube family. And if you like this kind of content, don't forget to hit that subscription button and we'll see you next time, guys.